Welcome back to Recaps HD. Today, we'll cover the thriller drama, Compliance. Spoilers are included, so beware and enjoy. At the start of the movie, we see Sandra, the regional manager of a branch of Chickwick restaurants. She's waiting for her employees to reach the restaurant. She has some important things to tell them before starting their daily work. Becky and Kevin finally arrive, and Sandra begins her speech on how they must all behave very well because a franchise quality control manager is coming to check their restaurant. During their short meeting, she's also getting worried because someone left their refrigerator door open, which led to food spoilage. Sandra tells them to follow all the rules and regulations they've been taught from day one. She says they're short on bacon, so they can only use two strips of bacon in each sandwich. And whenever they're free, they have to clean the place. Later, we see Becky talking to her shift manager, Marty. Becky says that she feels like Sandra might be suspecting her of leaving the door open. Marty tries to comfort her and tell her that it must be Kevin. Becky tells her about the new guy she's seeing. Sandra then comes and tells them about her fiance and later says that he hasn't proposed, but since he's spoken with her father, it's in the cards. When Becky talks about her man and how he sends her shirtless images of himself, Marty says that now she is too old for all of that stuff. But Sandra says that she's not old. She and her boyfriend sometimes exchange these steamy messages as well. Becky and Marty laugh when Sandra leaves, but Sandra hears them. They start talking about boys again. Sandra then starts inspecting different things. She meets Harold, and to her surprise, he's already gotten off work. Harold mentioned how he might visit them later tonight to try some milkshakes. She gives him a few recommendations, and he leaves. Later, Sandra receives a phone call from her boyfriend Van, and she tells him how busy she is tonight. She asks her whether he can go and have some fun with his friends. She asks if he plans to spend the night there, and when he says no, she says that he doesn't need to ask her for permission to visit his friends. However, she ends the call by advising him not to drink too much alcohol. Meanwhile, Becky, Kevin, and their colleague are chatting at the counter. Sandra comes and sees them like this and reprimands them. She then asks Kevin to go and restock his stuff and inquires why Becky isn't cleaning as she was earlier ordered to do. While she is having this conversation, Sandra is told about a phone call for her from the police. Sandra rushes toward her office and picks up the call. She introduces herself and the person on the other side of the phone introduces himself as Officer Daniels. He asks her whether she is the supervisor there. She says yes. He tells her that he's been in contact with their regional supervisor and now he needs her help. She asks whether this is about the refrigerator, to which he says no, this is about theft. A restaurant employee stole a customer's cash from her bag. He gives her a brief description of the possible suspect and when Sandra says, Becky, he says yes. Daniels then says that the regional manager had told him that Sandra would help him take care of this matter. He tells her that Becky is involved in extensive criminal activity, and even her brother is involved in it. Sandra goes and brings Becky to her office. She makes her talk to Daniels on the phone, who tells Becky that he has a woman who says that Becky stole from her purse. Becky denies these claims, but he's not ready to believe her. Daniels then asks Sandra to check Becky's pockets and confiscate her phone. When Sandra cannot find anything in Becky's pockets, he asks her to detain her and wait for the police to arrive. Sandra agrees. He then asks Sandra if she should strip search Becky. Sandra feels uncomfortable doing this, but Daniels convinces her that not doing this might lead to a more prolonged investigation and Becky's arrest. Sandra tells Becky that Daniels has given her two options. She must be put in a holding cell for the night or strip searched. Becky is not comfortable choosing either option, but when Sandra says she must choose one, she agrees to be strip searched, but only if Marty is present with them in the office. Sandra goes to bring Marty while Becky talks with the officer. Daniel says that he knows her older brother has been in trouble with the law in the past, and he reveals to her that he still is in trouble with the law. While Becky is talking about her brother, Marty and Sandra come in. Sandra gives a quick story on what's happening there to Marty, and then they proceed with the strip search. Becky removes her pants and shirt and hands them to Sandra, who tells Daniels that she found nothing. Daniels then tells Sandra to check her underwear. Sandra feels a little awkward, but she does as she is told. She doesn't find anything in it. When she says this, Daniels says that it might be hidden in some secret pocket, and therefore the police must check it. He asks her to place Becky's clothes in her car. Sandra feels weird about this, but he convinces her by saying that Becky's brother is suspected to be part of the drug dealing business, and she might be in it too. 
He tells her that he will be there soon, and until then they must secure Becky at the restaurant. Sandra has work to do, so she asks Kevin to watch Becky. She gives him a quick summary of everything in the office and leaves him there. Kevin talks to Daniels, and Daniels asks him to take off the apron Becky is using to cover her body. Kevin is friends with Becky, so he can't do this. He leaves the room, and when Sandra tries to stop him, he tells her that he knows Becky's brother, they've got the wrong person, and that Becky is his friend. Daniels talks with Sandra, and he tells her that Kevin is not a mature professional person, and she should not have told him confidential information about Becky's brother. When Sandra says that she has a lot of work to do and she can't keep watching Becky, he gives her the choice to either do it herself or ask someone else to do it on her behalf. She calls her boyfriend and he comes to the restaurant. Sandra explains the situation and tells him to keep an eye on Becky, since she might try to run. He starts his duty and then talks with Daniels on the phone. Daniels instructs him to inspect Becky by removing her apron. He says he can't do this. He is then ordered to give the phone to Becky. Daniels convinces her, and she agrees to be searched. She removes her apron, and then Daniels asks her to perform jumping jacks and bend over so Van can inspect her properly. Sandra suddenly comes in, and Van throws the apron back on Becky to cover herself. Sandra talks to Daniels, and during her conversation, Becky tries to ask her for help. Sandra gets angry with her. We then see Kevin talking to Marty about how bad this whole situation is and how Sandra's boyfriend staying to keep an eye on her is so inappropriate. Marty and Kevin agree on this point, but they don't do anything to stop the act. Daniel then again starts talking to Van, but his card is running out of time. He tries to cover this by saying that he had a serious situation at the house. He then asks Van to punish Becky by spanking her because she didn't behave in front of Sandra. Van doesn't like this idea, but he gets convinced when he says that afterward, he will ask her to do some service for him. Van starts with his spanking, and Becky's painful screams are heard by the man on the phone. He then asks to speak to Becky, where it's implied that he then asks her to perform a sexual act on Van. Later, Sandra comes in, and Van feels uncomfortable about what's happened. So he leaves and goes to his car where he calls a friend and says that he's done something very terrible. Later, Daniels instructs Sandra that she must now find another man to guard Becky. She goes and sees Harold, who came to get the milkshake. She tells him the whole story and asks him to keep a watch on her. When Daniel asks him the same thing as he asked Van, Harold gets angry and goes to tell Sandra that this is not right. Sandra finally feels something is off, and she contacts her regional manager. When she asks him, did he talk to an officer about the theft? He says that he was sick and didn't talk to anyone. He has no clue what she is talking about. When Sandra then speaks to the man on the phone, the man jokes and hangs up the phone. Kevin quickly takes off his number and notes it. They call the police and the police start looking for the guy. The investigator comes to realize that this was not a one-time thing. It had happened in the past and wasn't given much attention. Unfortunately, the suspect was never caught and now, after doing some hard work, the police have finally come close to catching him. They find out that the man behind the whole crime was a telemarketer with a normal family. He used prepaid card numbers to make these devious prank calls. Later, Becky seeks legal help, and her lawyer tells her that she should sue the government since they didn't provide proper hoax guidelines. And Sandra loses her job, and in an interview, she tells everyone that she is innocent and that she only did what she thought to be correct. She says anyone in her situation would have done the same. She left her boyfriend Van after what he did to Becky. This movie was inspired by real life events where a man committed over 70 similar crimes via prank phone calls in 30 American states.